Zempic and these other drugs like it. Diabetics and are going to end... Hang on, let me finish. Diabetics are going to end up not being able to get the crucial drugs they need because Oprah Winfrey fans are going to go out in their hundreds of thousands and now try and emulate her weight loss using this drug. And there, right there, okay. is the problem. Dr. Siegel, great to have you on Uncensored tonight. Thank you. Ernest, always good to, have, to have you on, great even if you're you normally first. defending the indefensible. Thank you. This is Talk TV. My friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The COVID inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast ah, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? Use? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. to Margaret Thatcher. She says at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, she watches That Was The Woke That Was with Pete Barnes, Suzanne Evans, Lois Perry and the fantastic Lord Moncton. Come on! Yay! Morning all. How are you? It's Sunday morning. It's early breakfast with you till 7 o'clock. Thanks so much for your company. As always, wherever you found us, wherever you may be, wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, you're very, very welcome indeed. You have chosen Talk TV. You've got exceptional taste. Well done, you. Pat yourself on the back because of that one. Am I rustling? I feel like I'm rustling a little bit. I, I, I think something's protruding into my microphone from my chest. I don't to think what it might be. 
might have been... Uh, uh, do you remember Julian Drucker yesterday morning? He had a flashing nipple. He was wearing a Christmas jumper and the, the battery was wearing out on, on uh, one of the lights on one of his nipples, which uh, is quite, quite the skill. You've got to give him that. Um, lots and lots for us to discuss this morning. We've got Simon Calder looking at the newspapers. A couple of travel stories which uh, I will be discussing with him and with you, including whether fat flyers should get extra large seats for free, whether airlines should redesign their cabins in order to accommodate those of us who are fuller figured or as I like to call people when I'm trying to be... I don't think we need to be kind when we're talking about people who are fuller figured. So, uh, fat. Fat. <laughs> well, they're fat. I'm fat. They're fat. Fat is a word. It's sort of... It's, fat is a, just a, an adjective. I don't know why people get so upset by the word fat. It's just a description. So, that one. Um, we'll talk as well about British Airways. They're spending £7 billion to become the world's favourite airline again. What should they do? Rishi Sunak... Uh, we should talk about the front page of a couple of the newspapers this morning where he is claiming that illegal migrants will overwhelm the UK. I'm not sure that the figures back that up, but we'll explore some of that over the course of the next couple of hours. And we will try to answer the eternal question that we uh, uh, brought up yesterday. And that is Christmas lights on the front of houses. Are they classy? Are they tacky? And is it classist to look down your nose at them? Because a writer has written a piece uh, saying that they are. So, all and more between now and seven o'clock, it's Talk TV. <laughs> so, lots for us to discuss. There's so many stories today. Because Simon's in, all the travel stories of the last couple of weeks, I, I sort of save up for Simon. Because I don't know if you read the story as well about what Isabel Oakshot went through at uh, airport security this week. So there's that story. There's also a story. It's in the Times today. We're going to dig it out. Um, we're going to dig that one out. Hint, hint. That's to my team. Dig that one out, please. Thank you. We're going to do that. Good. It's the one about Airbnb. Apparently the French are barricading. The French always get angry about everything. You've got to love the French. They don't put up with anything, do they? Apparently they're barricading houses that are being rented out for Airbnb, so we'll discuss that with Simon. And uh, also, uh, we'll uh, get the latest update from him on the uh, strikes over Christmas, uh, on the trains, and we'll discuss the airlines most likely to ruin your Christmas if you're planning on going away. So we have a lot between now and 7 o'clock, and always, when Simon's here, if you have any questions about any of your travel plans over Christmas, you have an encyclopedic knowledge of travel who will be here at six o'clock. Oh, and another one as well. There's something else we've got to pack in. How could I have forgotten to mention Queen Kinsey? We were supposed to do a live together on Friday night, but I'm still fending off this, this, this cough, this, this horror, whatever it might be. So her and I have not had a chance to discuss the Montecito Monas. Yes, Walmart Wallace. <laughs> and the Poundland Prince. We haven't had a chance to discuss their brand problems. We haven't had a chance to discuss the crown and how they're portrayed or how Harry is portrayed in it. And we also haven't had a chance to discuss Harry's victory this week when it came to phone hacking, which I have to say some people are a little cynical of the judge's comments, but we'll talk about that as well. So there's so much for us to discuss this morning. Oh, and something else for you as well. Sorry, I'm just drinking my peppermint tea. I have to this morning. I went for a curry last night. Oh, it was delicious. But you know when you eat a curry late night and you're like, oh my God, I'm never going to sleep. Oh, it's one of the most delicious things I've ever had. So I'm having a peppermint tea. Which is very middle class, isn't it? It's very middle class to have a peppermint tea. So I'm having a peppermint tea just to settle myself this morning. Just to get myself zen. There. There we go. That's it. That was Zen. That was the, that, that's the international symbol for Zen. That. I could start omming in a minute. Do you want me to start omming? No. I won't start omming. I could do, but I won't. Honestly, you're lucky I've not got my yoga tights on. Those viewers of a nervous disposition, I'm thinking of you this morning. I could. 
I, I could have come in in my yoga spandex. That would have been a sight to behold, honestly. I'll tell you something. That's better than Ozempic for putting you off your food, that. I tell you. really is. Stick a photo of that on the fridge. You won't eat for six months. Hey, talking of which. Now, um, don't laugh. It's not that funny. Now, um, I did promise, didn't I? I didn't, well, I didn't promise this, but a few people asked yesterday when we were talking about the Christmas lights um, and how I feel like my house might have crossed over. There's a line, isn't there, between classy Christmas lights on the front of your house and tacky Christmas lights on the front of your house. And I feel my house may have crossed over that line, right? But him indoors is obsessed. So coming up, we will talk about the... Um, I might show you a picture of my house. Now, for security reasons, we are working on that picture at the moment to take away any identifying features of the house because I love you all dearly, but I know you're all obsessed with me and I don't want you turning up on my doorstep. Do you know, once, once I did a Jeremy Vine, right, one of the Jeremy Vine TV shows, and somehow someone found my phone number and rang me after it and started arguing with me about the point that I'd be talking about on Jeremy Vine. I said, who is this? I was in the opticians. I'd gone straight to the opticians. I was like, who is this? Uh, they were like, right, the NHS. I mean, the waiting times. I was like, what are you talking about? How did you get my number? So, you know, once bitten, twice shy. Is the picture ready yet? 30 seconds. All right. Um, there's an opinion piece in today's... Uh, well, in the iNews uh, online. I think it was yesterday, actually. And apparently it is, according to this writer, Louis someone, Louis Staples, he claims that those people who look down their nose at Christmas lights are classist. It's a class thing. And that you are a snob if you do that. And it's very, very, very um, a British elit elitism if you look down your nose at them. Um... Now, him indoors, we spoke about this yesterday, where I said to him, look, you know, we are crossing over from classy to tacky with our Christmas lights. And now he went yesterday afternoon to Chelsea, right? And he's come back with no end of ideas. So he now wants a Christmas tree in the front garden as well. Yeah, he wants a Christmas tree with lights on in the front garden. But also... He wants an oversized bauble. Steady. He wants an oversized bauble for next year. And he also wants to come up with a way in which he can wrap the house with a bow. Because he went to Chelsea and he saw... Now, these people in Chelsea all have, like, professional people. They've got thousands of pounds that come and do this stuff. He now wants a bow on the front of the house for next year. I think we are crossing over to Tacky. So, uh, are you ready, ladies and gentlemen to look at a picture of the house and you can tell me whether we've crossed over from tacky to classy. So there we go. This is it. Is it on the screen now? This is it. So that is my house. Now, can you see? We've got Christmas lights along the front fence... We've got Christmas lights on the architrave around the front door. What you probably can't see in that picture is that there is a wreath on the front door. And that wreath is so big that you have, we have to move it aside in order to use the lock on the front door. Because it is the width of the door. Like I, I was on, he bought it online. I said, right, we just need a nice, classy, small wreath. He got the biggest one, which basically you can't get through the front door without moving the wreath aside, which is ridiculous. You can see, can we go back to the picture? We'll show it again. You can also see, now can you see in the bottom window, there are some lights, that's one star. And then above the bay window, there's a second star, right? But can you see to the left of the picture, that's the bin store. Now, I've got a close up of the bin store, which we'll show you as well, which is a different picture, because the bin store not only has lights on top of it, but it also has, can you see, four reindeer grazing because I put fake grass on the top of my bin store to make it look nice because I don't like bin stores with like loads of wood. And so now the reindeers are sort of grazing in the grass on top of the bin store surrounded by lights.
So my question is, my question is, have I crossed over there from classy to tacky? There's, a, there's another angle. So you can see on the left, you've got the bin store with the lights and the reindeer. You've got the lights along the front. You've got the lights around the front door. You've got the lights in the window and you've got the light and you've got the star above the window as well. I mean, it, that's a little bit much. I mean, I think, you know, what was the famous designer that says that when you leave the house, always take off one accessory? You know, there was a very, very famous stylist that said, when you go out your house, before you get out your front door, take off one item. Chanel, was it Chanel that said that? I think we need to Chanel my house and say, right, we need to remove an item. Do you think one item or more than one? Or the reindeer... You should see, I didn't take a picture of the back garden. The back garden has a rutting stag in, in, in Dear Monte Lights, as well as a polar bear. Now, we did have a, 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 a lamppost in Dear Monte Lights as well, but we've, we've got rid of that. I, I, said, I said that I had to go back, because that was so tacky. It was so tacky. We were going to have one of those either side of the front door, and we thought, that's, that's too much. So... Uh, I would love your opinion on whether we've crossed over from classy to tacky, but also generally whether there is a classism to this uh, when it comes to looking down your nose on Christmas lights. And I am looking down my nose at my own Christmas lights. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm stood outside. And, I mean, if we just put that picture back up again, the main one, or, or either of the big ones, um, just tell me, please... I mean, we are going to be a target of homophobic attacks, aren't we? I mean, that is literally the gays live here, isn't it? Because can you see the neighbours? They haven't done that. It's just our house, which you can see from outer space now. Literally, they're in the they're in the Mia space station. They're like, what's that down there? Oh, it's the gays. They live there. So I'm a bit worried. I have to be honest. So there you go. Um, what do you think? 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. Stop showing the reindeer. <laughs> Stop showing the scene of reindeer grazing. Thank you. Don't want to show that one. Uh, also, another story this morning, which I want to bring to you, travel-related as always. Now, uh, did you see the travel influencer that was on TikTok? And she was a plus-sized influencer... And she was basically trying to get onto a plane. This happened a few weeks ago and was, like, barging in all the seats. And she was saying that planes are discriminating against fat people by not accommodating them by having suitable seating. Well, she has now claimed that she's been meeting with a US senator in order to demand that the Federal Aviation Authority, this is the American Aviation Authority, gives overweight flyers as many free seats as they require to fly comfortably. Otherwise, it is an infringement on their human rights. What do you think of that one? Should fat flyers get free XL seats or as many seats as they could possibly want on a plane? Zero, three, double, four, four, double, nine, one thousand is the number to call. Uh, before we get to one of the calls on this... Let's go to one of the texts. Uh, Crystal, your lights are lovely. The more you upset your neighbours, the better. I have lots of gnomes and my neighbours hate them, but I love them, says Deborah in Seacroft in Leeds. Deborah, I'm not upsetting the neighbours. I'm upsetting myself. I'm the one upset by them, not the neighbours. I'm the one upset. All right, Cindy is uh, uh, over in Michigan. Hello, Cindy. Crystal, hello, my favourite presenter. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Bless you. How are you? Oh, I'm super. I want to talk about everything tonight. <laughs> All right, well, let's start. Let's crack on then. What do you want to start with? Christmas lights? OK, let's start with the Christmas lights because you just brought those on. I believe, to me, for me, your house looks classy. Glassy, and I'll tell you why. What I do is I always follow what's in the department stores, like the really nice department stores, and they generally, generally speaking, have soft or soft warm lighting. Yeah. And on their trees, they do like the gold trim. 
They don't do a bunch of zigzaggy light. But my, my, so, my, my, my question for you, though, Cindy, and I say this with love, is you are American, so you, you do have a higher you know, benchmark yeah. of, of, of I, tat. No offence. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I do, I do. And and what you see in the, the houses here generally are like a bunch of colored lights and it, it just, it's too much. But I like what you did. I, I, I you know, I think it's the did. reindeer. I think it's the reindeer. But when I said to my partner last night, I said, I think it's the reindeer that have got to go. Uh, the look I got was as if I had just said, let's go and drown one of the dogs. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was, <laughs> the, 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 he, he looked dejected <laughs> and frankly disgusted that I had made such a suggestion. So well, I'm, I'm not like going there you. again. <laughs> I am not going there again. Um, all right, what about obese people getting um, as many seats as they need? Okay, now, a few months ago, I would have fit in that class there, but I, I'm going to have to say um, we need to charge. Unless, unless they can prove that they're legally disabled. But if their obesity has yeah. created their legal disability, does that mean that they should get free seats or not? Um, I think... But sometimes you become a disabled legal. as a result of obesity, don't you? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, you can. So I think that, that if they're legally disabled, they are legally disabled. All right, so but if they I, are... I, you know, but, and, but if they're just overweight... Should you get no. f f as many seats? You've Is it against your human rights to not have as many seats as you want? No, on a plane when there's other people, and of course, you know, everybody wants more room. That's not fair. That's just not fair. And I don't think it would be against your civil rights unless you were disabled, well, legally I, I disabled. Think, I, think that, I think there's a balance to be had. If you can prove that you have a medical condition that means you are overweight, right? And I mean a serious mm -hmm. medical condition, you know, like your thyroid has been right. destroyed, then perhaps there is an argument to say that you should not have to pay for a second seat. I sort of see the logic with that. But I think if it is just oh, that yeah, you are, are overweight, then it's a bit of an odd path to go down because then we're going to end up with tall people saying, well, look, what about my human rights? You're going to end up mm, with people who are exactly. muscle bodybuilders right. saying, what about my human rights? And you'll end up with a situation <laughs> where planes will have to be flying with only four people on them. Yeah, there you go. And then what, what are we going to do? Uh, well, anyway. exactly. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You and I are going to end up paying more. That's what's going to happen because we'll end up subsidising yeah, yeah. all of the empty seats. <laughs> So uh, I think it's a, it's 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 quite a tricky one. Cindy, nice to talk to you. Nice talking to you. Love your show. Keep up the great, fantastic work. Thanks. Bless you, Cindy. That's Cindy out in Michigan. When we come back, we'll talk more about this, more about the Christmas lights. Um, we'll take a look at some of the other stories as well. And Kinsey will be here. So there's a lot for us to digest and dissect this morning, all here on Talk TV. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. 
if you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are Listen you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Morning, it's Christo here on Talk TV. Morning, Pauline. She's got a coffee, ready for some chat before getting up for church. Nice to hear from you. Uh, oh, the votes are coming in regarding... We should have done a poll, classy versus tacky. Den says, my house is out of balance with some of the uh, lights. You need lights along the guttering. I'm not getting up there to the guttering. You must be kidding. But you, when do you want me to get, a, get on a ladder? I am a land-based mammal. I'm not an air-based mammal. Uh, less in the foreground, and those reindeer are a step too far. But Christmas is a time for celebrating, and who cares about the killjoys? Well, I'm the killjoy, because I think we've gone um, on uh, a little bit too far. Um, on the subject of obese people on planes, this is a larger problem that is endemic in society with your own health or responsibility for behaviour that people don't take responsibility for oneself. People don't get a free seat for being overweight. Like I said before, if it's down to medical reasons, I accept that's a valid reason. Um, and for Christmas lights, I don't believe it's tacky if it's done right. And I think there's a line that people cross into that makes it very tacky, especially if people stray into having statues of Christmas scenarios. That's extremely tacky. I want like a statue of the nativity. That, yeah. Or I think, I think anything coloured as well. Do you know what I mean? Any, like, you know, if there's a Santa and he's in red, that's... That's tacky, you know what I mean? Or anything inflatable, tacky. But if it's white, if it's all white, I think that that's fine. Oh, it's probably racist that I've said that now, isn't it? Am I racist now? Oh, don't tell Meghan and Harry. Honestly, what colour will my Christmas lights be? Oh, no. I'm the royal racist. Uh, all right, let's go to David Essex. Morning, Dave. Good morning, Christo. Happy Christmas for next week. Thank you very much indeed. Now, what do you think about the uh, idea of uh, overweight people being given uh, extra large seats or extra seats for free? Uh, in certain circumstances, they should be given a concession of some sort, yes. Because... In many cases, my own especially, I mean, I've lost six and a half stone through not hard work, through starving myself. Well, starving yourself isn't a great idea. I mean, I presume you have been eating. It was the only way, because I have a respiratory condition, yeah. well, two, COPD and emphysema. I also have two forms of arthritis. So exercise was not really an option for you? I can't... I have to sit in a chair and diet. So, OK, well, understand. then then, then tell me, Dave, in your circumstances, should you have gotten extra seats or are you the proof that actually whatever health condition you might have, there, there is a capability to lose weight? Uh, well, I personally haven't for years but uh, but no but I, I, I just want to know how your experience has informed your view on this 
Uh, I believe they should be offered concessions, yes, because it's not funny being overweight. And, and it seems you appear to pay left, right and centre for being overweight. OK, but what about then the argument would be uh, that, OK, well, what if you're six foot four? You know, should you then get a concession for a seat up at the front for free because that's out of your control as well and isn't that unfair? Well, well, depend, once again, as I say, depending on health reasons. No, but, I mean, you, but, but, but if it's about comfort, which is probably what it is with people being overweight, I just guess that if we said to overweight people, fine, you get free extra space on the plane, and bearing in mind space is at the premium, there's, there will be two knock-on effects to that. One will be that other people who are shaped differently will say, well, what about us? And secondly, the prices will go up for everyone else that's flying in order to make up for that person who is taking up more room. Yes, yes, I do understand that, Christo, but as I say, you know, it, that would be up to the airlines, wouldn't it? It'd be up to someone who understands these things. Well, I don't think that that's going to change. In fact, I think it's going the other way. I think that there was an airline... I think it was Hawaiian Airlines or something. I might be wrong, but it was it was not a UK carrier. Um, they were weighing people before they went on the plane and, and then then uh, uh, charging for the ticket accordingly because, of course, we are all charged for a flight based on us being, you know, between 70 and 80 kilos, I think. And in actual fact, as a nation, we're a lot bigger now. Dave, good to talk to you. That's Dave. Um, if the woke crowd have their way we won't have any christmas lights and britain will be a dull place christmas is a magical time and your house looks heartwarming and beautiful 10 out of 10 for effort says john in wallington thank you david also says i think your house is just right i hesitate to say it but there's a certain style to it any more colored lights will make them tacky but i like it well i have to say other than the star hanging on the front on a hook <laughs> everything else was him indoors and he was out there with his little hammer and nails because he's hammered it all down with those little cable things so that no one can steal anything as well. Um, and Dan in Farnborough says, I'm six foot two and 18 stone. Oh, Dan. <laughs> Sorry, something got very hot in here. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> six foot two, 18 stone, pure muscle. Sorry. Um, uh, I fit in one seat and I have to pay for it. I'd be horrified if I spilled into two seats. Well, it depends who's, who's sitting next to you, Dan. <laughs> depends on how much they might like that. Uh, OK, um, let's now get you up to date. There's been a lot happening this week for us to discuss with your Right Royal Roundup. Christo's Right Royal Roundup. And joining me, as always, for the Right Royal Roundup, it is Her Majesty herself. It's Kinsey Schofield. Your Majesty. Hello, hello, hello. How are you this morning? I'm so tired. I'm getting ready to pack up my car and, and drive drive home for the holidays. So oh. excited excited for my to start my Christmas festivities. Oh, well, that's nice. And, 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 and are you looking forward to... Is Christmas big in your household? It's very big. And I um, am the, the number one aunt, so I, I'm, like, so excited for nephew time to start. And what about um, Christmas lights in the States? Because are they really, really big on Christmas lights out there? Because we've been trying to work out this morning the line between classy and tacky. Well, my family lives in the middle of the desert, and so it, the, the, everybody doesn't do it because they like that it's pitch black at night and all you can hear is coyotes howling and, you know, oh, creepy, you know, like all sorts of like mystery, you know, creepy crawlies out in the desert. But there are some of those gimmicky places that you go that have like 60,000 Christmas lights and everybody piles in the car and you go, you know, drive around the neighborhoods to look at them. Yeah, well, I'm hoping that our house ends up on that tour. Did you see the picture of our house this morning? I did. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, did you think so? Yeah, oh, I do. I think it's Oh, because nice. I'm worried that we've crossed over. What, what do you think of those, though? Those are the, those are the, the that's the reindeer scene. 
What do you I think, think that that's the most important. I feel like whenever I, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season, so you got to have the reindeer scene. Um, you and you and my husband would get on very, very well indeed. That's all I want to say. In fact, when we've done lives together and he's been in the background, you, you, you have seemed to have gone on quite well, and I think that you uh, uh, probably will uh, going forward because when I told him, as I said earlier, when I said to him, let's get rid of the reindeer, the look of disgust on his face. And I'm surprised. Yeah, no, he, he knew exactly. He knew whatever. That recommendation is wrong. Yeah, well, the, it was a look similar to a disgust that you just had. So I can, I can there's a synergy there. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, 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 less important things. Um, we've got to talk Wait, really about... Really quickly, really, really yes. quickly. What did you think of The Crown? Because I feel um, absolute guilt for loving every second of the last few episodes. Um, I loved the last few episodes. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd say about it. I thought that the episode... So, basically, for anyone who doesn't know, the last final six episodes of The Crown dropped earlier this week and they take us up from um, the aftermath of Diana's death and the way in which William, Prince, the then Prince William coped um, up until just after the Queen's golden jubilee and the marriage between um, Camilla and Charles. And, in fact, that's the last episode, the marriage between uh, Prince Charles and uh, the then Duchess of Cornwall. So that's the time period we are looking at. Harry features, there are uh, William features, uh, Kate Middleton at university features, as do the Middleton family. Um, I thought that the dullest parts were the bits where they outlined the romance between Kate and William. I thought that that, that was... offends as... me more than you've ever... Like, more than removing the reindeer, because I was... I've watched those episodes multiple times already. Oh, I, no! My, yes, and my girlfriend went to school with them and li lived three doors down from them on Hope Street. So I'm like, did this really happen? And what about that? So I'm, like, loving those. Uh, my biggest argument about that storyline is instead of the morbid queen imagining her death at the very end, I wish that it would have been a mashup of Charles and Camilla preparing for their wedding and a mashup of William and Kate preparing for their wedding. Like but that would, forth, but the, I don't forth. think the timings would have worked for that, though, because Charles and Camilla were married, I think, in, what was it, 03, well, I, I know, but you know how sometimes they look back on the past? Yeah. Okay, flash like forward maybe, and a flashback. Maybe, 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 maybe Charles could have been like giving William advice about his wedding day while going back to his his wedding you day. Should be, to you should you should produce the next one, Kinsey. You should produce. The I next just one. thought I just thought like that would have made me feel like happy, happy joy, like ver versus like, oh my gosh, we just lost this woman and now we're watching her ponder her own death it was too much i mean you're right and i wonder whether that was written i did wonder whether this is the final episode we're talking about uh, where she's actually oh, yeah, spoiler alert everyone yeah well, she's actually funeral planning because she not look, was about to turn 80 um which would have been about oh four i think she turned 80 and i don't i'm schooled i don't know math um I think it was 26 she was born, so it would have been 2006. I think it was set in 2005, though, the final episode. When did Charles and Camilla get married? Can you look that up, please? And um, But uh, you're right. That was when they were saying, look, we want to update Operation London Bridge. We want to update your plans for your funeral. 2005. Um, we want to update the, the, the plans for your funeral. So she is, and she kind of has a bit of a, 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 a crisis about whether she should remain on the throne or abdicate and hand over things to Charles, which, by the way, was nonsense. That would never have happened. The never, Queen would never have ever even happened. contemplated never. such a thing. But they obviously had to create some drama in the final episode. I thought it was quite nicely done, but there were parts of it that made me sort of eek a little bit but there were also parts that were beautiful. There's the part in it where she actually chooses the lament on the bagpipes that was going to end up in her funeral, which, of course, we saw, and it was played, and that was beautiful because it was a real reminder of how beautiful that moment was in her funeral where uh, the lone bagpiper sort of walked away and you could hear it in the distance. And so it was beautiful to see her choose that moment within the series, um, and I thought that the... Um, any of the episodes that, that heavily featured Princess Margaret, her death is covered in there as well, quite extensively, and that was a beautiful episode. The only episode I had a problem with 
was, uh, and I thought the episode where they were going through William's grief and the uh, anger he had towards his father, uh, uh, the then Prince yeah. Charles, was uh, brilliantly done. That was episode five. The dull one was episode six, where he was getting together oh, with Kate and they were choosing to go to university because that was so dull. Oh, I thought that was seven. I thought six seven. was Tony, the Tony Blair dream. And I was oh, like, maybe that was that? seven. But okay. either way, that was... But every series has a really dull episode. Every series yeah. has one episode where you go, oh, God, this is this is the, the, the dull one. And that was the one where I just thought it was... There was no sparkle to it. There was no pizzazz. And the w only other observation I would make, which I'm interested to hear what you would say about this, is I do think, and this isn't necessarily a criticism... But one of the things I loved most about The Crown was how heavily it featured Crown and State. Crown versus Parliament. Parliament, Prime Minister versus the relationship with the Queen. And how intricate and interesting those relationships were. And I think the final two series didn't have that. You know, the, the, the relationship she had with Harold Wilson in Series 3, amazing. Relationship she had with Thatcher in Series 4, amazing. Relationship she had with Winston Churchill in the first series, amazing. All of those, I, there was really not very much of that in the final two series. It did sort of regress into a little bit of a soap opera and more family drama, and I do think it lost a little bit because of that. W what do you say? Mm, and Tony Blair is such a unique character too that you know I'd much rather have seen an intimate conversation between the two of them than that bizarre dream sequence. I, um, I, I agree and I think that I wonder whether because Peter Morgan wrote the movie The Queen where it was very much around Tony Blair and the Queen and their relationship after Diana died. I wonder whether that was... And Peter Morgan, of course, is the person who is behind the crown. I wonder whether he deliberately wanted to move away from that for the crown. But I, I feel like as a, as a, a six-series piece of work, it lost something as a result of that. That, that, that. You're right, Tony Blair was such an interesting character. I really would have liked to have seen more of the interactions between them and, and the clashes they might have had on things. And clear and like clearly, why did why was there such resentment? Because we saw that there was a lot of resentment there, um, but not a lot of build up around it, or not a lot of um, Tony Blair recognizing the resentment. Maybe during that one Iraq comment, but otherwise, um, you know, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, I also thought that they did such a great job, and they didn't do it with Andrew, but they did do such a great job of painting princess margaret's despair over being the spare and they dipped their toe in with harry this season but you and i talked about how whether or not they if, if harry was not tr truly put under a microscope in this season that it would let us know how much influence he had at Netflix. And oh, we I found out I, that it's very little. I, yeah, because <laughs> I think that that he comes across terribly in it. Terribly. Absolutely, Absolutely terribly. Horrible. He's got a terrible bowl cut. He comes across as someone who contributes nothing other than vindictiveness, um, weed smoking, and uh, the Nazi costume. I mean, that is based, those are basically his, his storylines. <laughs> and then every time they try to make him quirky or charming, like when he hands um, William the prophylactic in front of all of the elderly people, it's, like, cringeworthy. It's not yeah. even like, oh, Harry's so silly. It's like, oh, like, oh, no. Why are you handing out condoms in front of your great-grandmother, you weirdo? <laughs> you're, you're right. I, I think that, that clearly Netflix would, like, well, we don't care about annoying him because the, he comes across absolutely dreadfully in it and talking about how harry comes across we're going to be discussing um the markles and the brands that they are no longer going to be spending uh, uh much time with uh, as we predicted you and i kinsey and uh, also uh, we'll talk about harry's victory this week and piers morgan's damning response to that that is all coming up live here on talk tv Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones.
I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? Use? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Good morning, it's Christo here on Talk TV, and let's get up to date now with our Right Royal Roundup. Kinsey's Right Royal Roundup. Kinsey Schofield's still here. Do you know, Kinsey, the more I look at that, the more I think yours is better than mine. I'm actually a bit annoyed about that. I want to tone oh. down your one because yours is really good, and mine is just like me stuck on a with a crown on my head. I think you at least you you at least need a little choreography in yours. I know you've got curtains, you've got everything. You're looking amazing. You know, oh well. I don't want to be the I spare. I was I was about thirty or forty pounds lighter in that photo. So God bless God bless Jenny Craig. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm I'm not saying a word. That is not something I feel qualified to comment on because any answer I give will be wrong. However, um, what I will say is you're looking fabulous, as always, and we think that you're a, a svelte queen as far as we're concerned. Oh, now, um, but, but, if, but if Southwest would like to give me two seats on a plane for free, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think any budget airline... I'm surprised to hear you fly southwest, frankly. I'd have thought you'd have been on a scheduled carrier, but anyway, that's, that's, that's put you down in my estimation. Uh, right, we should talk about the uh, victory that um, Prince Harry had regarding phone hacking. Now, I don't think anyone was surprised to hear that phone hacking took place in a tabloid newspaper around the time that phone hacking was taking place in a tabloid newspaper. And it's shameful. If it was taking place, it's absolutely shameful. Um, the judge said that there was... Uh, uh, that, that, that he believed that Harry was being phone hacked. Um, many other celebrities have been as well. It's a really shameful time in the history of tabloid journalism and I don't think that there's anyone I know that works in tabloid journalism that wouldn't agree with that. But specifically, 
Our very own Piers Morgan was editor for a time when there was one of the uh, uh, um, instances of phone hacking. And, of course, Piers Morgan, we'll hear from him now before we hear from you, Kinsey. Let's remind ourselves of what he had to say as a result of this judgment. The judgment finds there is just one article relating to the print published in the Daily Mirror during my entire nine-year tenure as editor that he thinks may have involved some unlawful information gathering. To be clear, I had then, and still have, zero knowledge of how that particular story was gathered. All his other claims against the Daily Mirror under my leadership were rejected. With regard to the judge's other references to me in his judgment, I also want to reiterate, as I've consistently said for many years now, I've never hacked a phone or told anybody else to hack a phone. And nobody has produced any actual evidence to prove that I did. I wasn't called... So there we go. He talked today about the appalling behaviour of the press. But this is a guy who's repeatedly trashed his family in public for hundreds of millions of dollars, even as two of its most senior and respected members were dying, his grandparents. It's hard to imagine, frankly, more appalling behaviour than that. As for him saying this is a good day for truth, the Duke has been repeatedly exposed in recent years as someone who wouldn't know the truth if it slapped him around his California tanned face. He demands accountability for the press, but refuses to accept any for himself for smearing the royal family, his own family, as a bunch of callous racists without producing a shred of proof to support those disgraceful claims. He also says he's on a mission to reform the media when it's become clear his real mission, along with his wife, is to destroy the British monarchy. And I will continue to do whatever I can to stop them. You look very Mary I mean... Kinsey, I sort of couldn't have put that better myself, really. I mean, OK, you know, Piers Morgan, again, denies that he was in any way involved or had any knowledge whatsoever of any of the uh, uh, hacking that took place. Uh, one of the witnesses that, that, that was uh, a party to this apparent hacking uh, being instructed was Omid Scobie, who we now know has not always been, um, shall we say, bathed in the sunlight of honesty. And, Eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, and so, I don't know, do you think that this vindicates Harry somewhat, or do you still remain cynical about the other aspects of Harry's uh, uh, conduct? Well, I think it was smart of Pierce Morgan to lay out just the pure hypocrisy of everything that Harry says his objectives you know harry says that his objectives are to squash some of the exact things he's doing today um and then honestly when i saw the the quote of, from harry after the victory about slaying dragons i had to, i had to like fact check i went to three different places to make sure he really said he was trying to slay dragons because i thought isn't this a 40 year old man like, is this, isn't this a grow up, grown up? Like, this isn't Game of Thrones, Harry. Like, this is real life. Um, but I think that he's not getting the reaction he wants probably publicly as far as sympathy because we are all today experiencing a, a bizarre invasion of privacy. If you think about, you know, Meta and Facebook and all of the content that was you know, sold our information that was sold to different companies without our knowledge. I think we all have dealt with with invasions of privacy today. And so it's harder for us to um, really get behind him and go, yeah, yeah, because we're not getting a hundred and a hundred thousand dollars out of it. But also, I think that the, the fundamental point which Piers Morgan picked up on, and I, I don't agree with everything that Piers Morgan says, far from it. But on this, I, I think he's spot on, is that that the dragons you're trying to slay are the dragons of an invasion of your privacy. Now, if that invasion of the privacy crosses over into law-breaking, absolutely Done, repellent yeah. and, and not something that should ever be tolerated. But the principle that you're fighting for, which is um, privacy and autonomy over what is released to the media, firstly, that's unrealistic because you can't create a circus and then get annoyed that you're the ringmasters of that circus, which they yeah. do by giving interviews and by by these documentaries and, and, and the book and all that stuff. Podcasts. But, but more importantly, 
you are no you are not in any way able to take the moral high ground on this when you are releasing personal details of aspects of your brother and your father's lives of which like they... you're describing your brother's private parts yes like and so, extremely so inappropriate it's it's so I, I agree i think the victory really is the fact that law breaking has been called out and has been appropriately compensated and i think that that's fair if that took place but the principle of him fighting for privacy i mean I, i'm i'm just i'm not going to really have much truck with that because they have they have invaded other people's privacy and more more they've invaded their own i mean they right. they've invaded their own if they stopped giving interviews, TV series, books, and everything else, then then eventually we'd lose interest. We wouldn't talk about it. But they want to have it all on their own terms, and that is just naive and arrogant, I think. Yeah, and that I just can't think of one single example of maybe Angelina Jolie. But I feel like her objectives are totally different and she probably has enough money that she uh, wasn't as desperate as they clearly were. Are you talking about what, with, withdrawing from, from life kind of thing, you mean? Yes, and then you only hear about that her. You only hear about Angelina Jolie when she needs, you know, needs or wants you to. Uh, otherwise, um, she's, you know, she, she can disappear for years at a time. Yeah, I, I think that, that, that they are really, really naive and, you know, that they, they'd be nowhere near the circus around them that there is now had they not done the, those, the, those documentaries, the podcasts, the book, uh, the interviews, all of that and stuff. And there would be so much love for them, Christo. There would still be it, so much love yeah, for them. Yeah, they could just say, look, we, we couldn't handle the pressure of being royals anymore. We wanted to withdraw from the family. We've gone to live somewhere else. Sorry about that. And we'd say, well, that's a shame, but we'll get over it but it's the constant creation of of headlines that you then complain about when they're not all in your favor it's it's bizarre to me and it's incredibly naive um but of course as you and i have predicted this is having an effect on brands because uh, we have spoken many times about how brands don't want to work with them the brands of the of the status that harry and meghan want to work with do not want to touch them and and that's been demonstrated this week that's right uh, earlier on saturday afternoon deadline released a report about how harry and megan felt like they weren't accomplishing what they wanted to accomplish collaboration wise um, making megan more of a spokesperson or a, an ambassador because of a vendetta you know against them by the royal family they now the and now deadline does quote the express a lot in this so i think that this is likely more an ex, an express exclusive however deadline is an industry outlet so the types of people that will be making decisions about harry and megan are reading deadline yesterday today they're reading this article and seeing harry and megan's source complaining about how they were very close to working with Dior. Harry wore Dior at the coronation. There were meetings happening. And then all of a sudden, Dior completely uh, basically ghosted them, according to this report, started to work with Queen Consort Camilla. And even have they've made the young woman, I believe, I'm not even going to try to say her name, They've made the young woman that plays Kate Middleton in The Crown this season their new face of Dior when rumors were swirling about six months ago that Meghan was going to become the new face of Dior. And that and you and I said at the time, this is likely Meghan's team releasing this, hoping that they realize, like Dior goes, oh, people love this idea. Let's offer this opportunity to Meghan. And so... This but Dior aren't going to touch them. Dior are not, and you and I said this so many times that they are not going to touch them because Dior want the, want the royals. Dior want mm -hmm. actual royals, or they want, uh, and I'm not the crown royals. Yeah, they, and they don't want the royals sort of you know flogging everything of them, but they want that brand association with royalty, and they know if they dress Harry and Meghan in a in a in a professional capacity, as in you know, paying them to be brand ambassadors, the, 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 the British monarchy will just basically say, right, well, that is Dior blacklisted. And they're not going to do that. They're not stupid. 
Right. So, um, you know, they're saying that uh, the the talent agency, William Morris Endeavor, is scrambling to try to figure out what next steps are because they've got to get them out of this really dark place. And Be because, again, of course, it's been uh, sorry to interrupt, but it's been like, what is it now? Six months since yeah, that she signed, that with, them she signed with them and nothing has materialized. Absolutely nothing. And so they suggest that I, I think their game plan has been to get Harry and Meghan to reconcile with the royal family. They think that if they just stop the bleeding, yeah. then maybe they can get Harry and Meghan back on the right track. Well, let's see. So suspiciously, let's... suspiciously, page six then releases an exclusive report this week that says Harry plans to call his okay. father. We've got to leave it. Kinsey, we've got to leave it. But we will continue this next week. Wonderful to have you. Kinsey Schofield, next hour we've got Simon Calder with Travel News here on Talk TV. This is Talk TV. Three, two, one. Uh, go, Graham. This, my friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda is zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you? to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Oh, my God, it's the ghost of Margaret Thatcher. She says at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, she watches. That was the woke that was with Pete Barnes, Suzanne Evans, Lois Perry and the fantastic Lord Moncton. Come on. <laughs> Good morning.
Bit of an abrupt end to Kinsey there, but her and I could go on for absolutely hours and uh, we will speak to her again, as always. Wonderful woman. And uh, we go from a wonderful woman to a wonderful man this hour because I'm here. No, I'm joking. It's Simon Calder. Uh, he <laughs> is here, of course, uh, travel editor for the uh, independent travel expert extraordinaire. And uh, we're going to talk to him in a moment. And, of course, we've got loads of stories to discuss, including what should BA do? £7 billion pounds they're going to spend trying to get back to being the world's favourite airline. Um, we'll find out whether that's likely. XL seats for XL people on planes. Should that be something that is given for free? We'll talk about the front page of today's mail on Sunday. Talk about why the French are so angry about Airbnb. And, of course, any questions you might have for Simon about what's coming up over Christmas or uh, anything regarding the strikes or travel advice. This man knows everything. I mean, seriously, I could ask him any travel question and he'd know it. <laughs> and so, um, there you go. So, there you go. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call or you can send me a question on the text for him all here live on Talk TV. So welcome, Simon Calder. Lovely to see you, Christo. Do you know, we were singing your praises yesterday, myself and Julian Drucker from Five News, who was here yeah. in your seat. Do you know why? Because, well, actually, it was bizarre. We were talking about a question of sport. Yes. Right? And we were talking about it being axed. And we were talking about how there are certain formats that get fiddled with when there's nothing wrong with them. But a new person comes in and says, oh, you know, this has been going the same for 20 years. It's rating through the roof. I, I want to play with it. I'm going to fiddle with it. And that's what happened with the question of sport and it's ended up being axed. And that's got us talking about, you know, an obsession with celebrity names and, and, and being put in, into things and, you know, uh, you know, saying, oh, we want some celebs in a question of sport, which got us talking about... Um, documentaries and celebrities always needing to front documentaries and we were saying gone are the days of an expert in their field Alan Wicker Judith Chalmers you know going and doing you know saying right well I'm going to go and do a travel show it has to be sort of, you know, Caroline Quentin goes and looks at travel or Joanna Lumley goes to India or Miriam Margulies sits on a squat toilet. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and, and we were saying, you know, we, we need more Simon Calders and Judith Chalmers and those well, sorts how, of people. How, how lovely of you. I mean, if I may, um, I was involved in, um, for example, the holiday programme, which ran yes. for 39 years, I think. Um, and I was uh, my, my only claim to fame, Christo, is that I presented the very last film in the very last holiday program ever. And do, um, do you do you think that perhaps with our obsession with celebrities? Because, uh, you know, that we're maybe losing a little bit when it comes to those sorts of shows. Uh, look, it, it all depends um, what the viewer wants. Ultimately, it's the market. And it, if you go back to 1968 or whenever the holiday programme originally started, at that time, it was before the jumbo jet. This was all about the democratisation of travel from the point of view of, look, you can see what Benidorm looks like in Spain. Whereas now, thankfully, um, it, the cost of travel has drastically fallen. Um, overall, we're wealthier than we were. And therefore, for, for the vast majority of people, a trip abroad is still possible. So therefore, if you're not suddenly uh, be a, able to reveal great secrets to the viewer, then, well, you might as well have a character. Uh, I suppose yeah, you need that celebrity sparkle yeah. because actually the, the, the destination itself might not be enough to sell it because a lot of people, that wouldn't be something new and amazing uh, to them. Uh, and you have got people, and I don't know where they sort of fit into, into this. I mean, Michael Palin, Simon Reeve, absolutely Yes, terrific. Simon Reeve is, 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 yeah. is, is absolutely so, brilliant. But, and, and I love that he's an expert on in his field on that. I just, I just worry. I saw a brilliant documentary the other day, and you just reminded me of it with the jumbo jet, which was on... Uh, Channel 4, I don't know if you uh, caught it about supersonic travel. Ah, right. Oh, well, look, um, I, I could talk for days about supersonic travel. I was lucky enough to travel on um, Concorde once as a courier, so you could actually a, a drug pay. Mule, have you just no, um, but thank you very much. Uh, no, this was perfectly legitimate. What you did was you called this number and you booked a spot and you paid £150 and then you turned up at Heathrow and you were checked in with 
about seven bags of time sensitive stuff this was before email it was even really before sort of faxes got going and you would sit there they just needed it needed if i may a bum on a seat yeah. and and you would just sit there and you would be flown across the atlantic at twice the speed of sound and you would be given the very elaborate four course meal with a steward coming round and lighting your cigar wow. afterwards. What times? How I'm ridiculous! So jealous uh, that you weren't on on. Well, it was very cramped. What do you think of the plan then? Um, if people aren't aware, there's a, a, a conglomerate of people who are. Um, attempting to have the final one of the last concords which is sort of in Manchester Airport maybe I yeah, can't remember where it good, is yeah, yeah. or I think it's actually on a stand at Heathrow maybe there oh, is, there, there is a, there's one park round the back of Heathrow it's that one Eastern end yep it's that one and uh, they want to put it in the Thames have you seen that story uh, that sounds a really good idea yeah they want to um, so beside the London Eye yeah they want to build um, actually in the Thames a museum and then have Concord on oh, top yeah. of it Beautiful. and refurbish the Concord. Yes. And therefore, and people will be able to go in at one end, walk along, have a look at it, come out the other end, and then below will be the museum, which explains about how Concord came to be. And it would mean that, that one of the final Concords would be preserved and it would become a site on the Thames forevermore. Yep. Um, if at the moment, if you want to see Concord at Heathrow, the best thing to do is catch. I think it's bus four two three, which goes past the car park where it's kind of hidden. hidden but uh, it's, and, it's, it's but it's deteriorating. Oh I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's right, been right. stripped out and it's yes. in a right mess. So they're talking about bringing it back to its former glory. Great, that's and then terrific. getting it onto uh, the temple. It was very recent that they were talking about it. So at the moment, I think they're crowdfunding for it, yeah. so that everyone can, so they can sort of get architect's plans and all of that sort of stuff. But there's some quite big business people oh, yeah. behind it. It sounds a, a terrific idea. I'm just going to look it up for you. So I mean, it was a complete um, technological uh, cul-de-sac, the Concorde. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Just as the Americans were coming up with the jumbo jet to allow far more people to fly for far less... Um, we were going exactly the opposite way, saying this is um, this is a rich man's toy, effectively, and uh, with the emphasis on males. This is uh, it's con if you want to know more, Concord on the Thames. Dot co. Concord on the Thames. And this though. that's what they want to do. If I'm just holding Ooh, up my laptop screen, that's lovely. Yeah. Can you see that? So the Concord would be on top of the yeah. the the museum, yes. and it would sit there permanently, and. Below it would be a museum, no, not very big, and it would be beside the London Eye. Yeah, and there'd be a pier great. going out to it. And, um, you know, they're trying to, I think they want British Airways to sponsor it. And um, they've launched a crowdfunding appeal to raise funds for a planning application to put Concord on the Thames. So we're asking the British public to donate whatever they can to support our application um, to put Concord on a platform on the Thames to save the London Concord, currently in a corner at Heathrow. Save the London Concord. And restore yeah. her to her former glory as a new exhibit opposite the Houses of Parliament, next to the London Eye. Um, you can donate to the appeal, and um, basically uh, it's Concord supporters and enthusiasts... Um, they are wanting to secure the Concorde from British Airways, so they need a million pounds in donations. That will cover the three planning applications. Um, and they also want VIPs, politicians, corporate leaders, Global Concord fraternity to help us save this Concord. I am behind that appeal 100%. But they've only got £7,000 in donations at the moment, so it's well, a look, little bit Well, I, I think if they had a, a, a figurehead like you leading this, Christo, then everything would um, get... But what about you? I mean, would, would, you, would you be well, behind something like this? I, I would love to go and see I mean, it. In principle, I'd love to see it. I, I mean, I, I, Concord was incredibly damaging. I uh, There might be people listening who remember up until October 20, 2003, you knew when it was 25 past 10 in the evening, because if you were in London, you would just hear this roar, the ground would shake, and, and that would be uh, Concorde coming in after the um, afternoon flight from uh, New York JFK. And 
it used a ludicrous amount of fuel. It was incredibly noisy because it was basically using 1950s military jet engines. And so the whole thing was just, uh, there are only um, seven in service with British Airways. Uh, it, was, it, 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 it was a ludicrous concept, but it is a beautiful aircraft and it is the one aircraft where people where the, that turned people's heads. And do you think that it's, it's a shame that, it does seem a real shame that there's one just like stuck in the corner of Heathrow oh, yeah. and we're not celebrating. Well, let, let's try and work out where the others are. So there's one in Filton in Bristol, where they were kind of half-built. Most of them were done over in Toulouse in, in France. Uh, then there's one in Manchester, Ma isn't Manchester there? Airport, really nice one at the uh, Aviation Park by the runway there. Another one in near Edinburgh. Then you've got one in New York, I believe, another one in Barbados uh, by the airport. Um, and, and uh, yeah, we could certainly do with having one on the Thames. So. I think that that's that's um, I think that that would be just amazing to celebrate that I really do. I, I think that we should get behind that. I think you should write an article about it if you can. Ah okay well thank you very much for commissioning <laughs> that. Okay good 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 yeah I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll... Well, if you love supersonic travel it's a really good thing so anyway um, you can I, I'm not affiliated to it in any way shape or form you won't think it's a terrible idea but if you want to know more Concord on the Thames is uh, the website and there was an article in the mail about it at the end of November. Oh, um, that okay. was um, all about it. That was where uh, Sunday, the twenty sixth of November, and that was where uh, I first um, uh, found out about this project, which I think would be wonderful. Uh, let's talk about the front page of the Mail on Sunday. Rishi Sunak is saying that Britain faces being overwhelmed by illegal migration, which will destroy our democracy if radical measures are not taken now. Um, he used a speech in Italy to demand Thatcherite approaches to curbing illegal migration and called for international human rights laws to be changed to stop them being exploited. Meanwhile, Labour has been accused of hypocrisy after the Mail on Sunday discovered one of its election candidates organises children's holidays to Rwanda. However, they are maintaining that it's too unsafe to send illegal migrants to. Um, but uh, uh, Rishi Sunak, um, who uh, uh, won that Commons vote uh, back on, uh, I think it was Monday, uh, regarding uh, Rwanda, he is saying that, uh, 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 that illegal migration will overwhelm our countries and our capacity to help those who actually need our help the most. Um, uh, yeah. Do you think he's right to say this sort of thing? Or do you think that the proportion of what... It, the context of how many people are illegally coming here warrants the kind of talk that he's giving? Oh, of course not, no, but this is all about making the next election um, with, with uh, immigration at its heart, illegal immigration at its heart, certainly a subject that uh, uh, alarms a lot of people and globally, in time, there has to be a complete overhaul of the post-war rules on on um, refugee status because they're simply not fit for the 21st century. So that has to happen. To say that illegal migrants are going to overwhelm Britain is patently not true. I mean, this year we will... Uh, about one in 20 of the migrants coming to the UK will not... Uh, will have typically crossed the channel in small boats. Um, so it's a tiny so it's a part tiny of the proportion. Yeah, but, but obviously it makes the headlines on the mail and that's, that's all it? thereafter. Um, and and, and that, that is too many. And, of course, Labour has to deal with it. Were they to become uh, the, the party of government? And something has to be done. Rwanda is just a ludicrous um, sideshow because uh, you would send 200... No, I, I think it will never happen. And, and, never and there, happen. Were, there were more than three, 300, I think, came in yesterday. So you've, you've got to um, work with the whole of the European Union, if you remember that, and get, get uh, some kind of system working and, of course, attack the problem of this, which is generally appalling governments in many parts of the world. So, yes, there's a huge amount to be done, but uh, no, the headline is just, um, you know, the, the uh, Conservative Central Office, they will chalk that up as another success. We've got this on the front page, we're making it an issue, and that's our only but I, hope. I think, I think that, well, there's a couple of things to say about this. I think, firstly, I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I don't think you're wrong that the numbers, actually, migration that we allow to come here legitimately far outweigh illegal migrants that, that, that or people who come here from illegal mine, means without a doubt and 
I think that if I was someone who was voting based on the immigration, I would be furious at the 700,000 that we saw sort of last year in, in net migration and all those sorts of figures that we've seen from people who have been allowed to come here. I think that the issue that people have, though, is that uh, British people are very much... I think they're annoyed about those numbers, but I think British people are very much as well about a sense of what's right and wrong. Yes, absolutely. And I think that it's almost as if we could, they, that they can say, well, look, yeah, we know that 95% of migration is from people who are allowed to come here, but we're more angry by that 5% because yeah, they're out of our control yeah. and we don't know who they are and we don't know more, much about them and they seem to be able just to become, becoming here. We're, we can still be annoyed about the 95%, yeah. but we're more annoyed by the 5% because it, it, it's not fair. Uh, sure, that, yeah. that's reasonable? Yeah, of, of course, absolutely reasonable. And there is what appears to be a kind of conveyor belt. And in order to get across the channel, you are going to be paying people smugglers uh, many thousands of pounds to get from wherever you are. So actually, it's, it's very much an economic model that uh, only uh, relatively richer people from the locations where, where, where terrible things are happening are able to um, p to pay to uh, be smuggled across to the UK so it's, it's a, a hopeless mess and but but it's one that that works because there is this um, quite long established business model and I, I do agree with the government that you've got to attack the business model but when they say this is an outrage and we've got to adopt a Thatcherite solution you're sort of thinking hang on who's been in power for the last 13 oh, years I, I agree it's a problem um, that they have created by not as well the reason as well that people are so angry by the lack of sense of fair play around it is not only the the, the sight of people coming here and it and it seemingly being um you know, not within our control, but I think that also the amount of money that it's costing to keep people here who have not been processed, but that yeah. th that lack of processing has been under this government. So they are trying to solve a problem that they themselves have presided over. Um, however, Labour say that they will talk to the EU more and try and broker a deal with the EU. But of course, uh, when uh, Sir, Sir Starmer was... Uh, spoken to on Good Morning Britain and BBC all this week, the day of the vote, he would not deny that that would involve potentially taking a quota of migrants from the EU, which would potentially push numbers up even more. So it, it, if I was a voter voting on this issue, I would say, well, hang on, the Conservatives haven't been across this issue at all. Labour want to talk to the EU, which might be good on paper, but that would probably involve some sort of quota where would I turn to to get this problem solved? Oh, well, and that's why um, you, you have the um, prospect of the Reform Party coming in to grab that whole vote of, of, of we're really worried about this. And uh, that, of course, is uh, an, another aspect. But the, the crucial thing is, yes, absolutely, lots of people are concerned about this, and particularly in communities which are kind of directly affected, where you're feeling that you're, you can't get a, a GP appointment, um, that housing is a real problem. But arguably, there are bigger questions, such as the complete lack of growth in the UK economy, the cost of living crisis, and so on. And it's not... It, it, it's... Um, it, it all depends what's going to be at the heart of the election. And, and but, the, the Conservatives very, very much want immigration to be there. And But the problem is that if they actually said, right, the bigger problem is that 95% of people who are coming here are allowed to come here and we're going to solve that problem, they would have to admit that that's their problem yeah. and that's the problem that they've created. And so there's a lot to be furious about, I think. There's a lot of... If people are worried about... And, like, I... I, I I love that people want to make a better life for themselves. I do, but but where I have concerns about it, and I think they're absolutely valid concerns, is it's a numbers game. It's infrastructure versus population and whether our infrastructure can cope with the population. And at the moment, even if we stopped immigration for 20 years, that's how long it, I think it would take for housing and the NHS and everything else to catch up. But but also you've got the big, huge, huge problem of, of the number of economically inactive British people, which is the reason we need all these people, particularly things like care homes and so on. Um, and yes, infrastructure is a problem, but so is the actual operation of these the, 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 these um, organisations to keep us... Uh, well, absolutely, yeah. but that's because we have built our economy on a house of cards based on outsourcing jobs that 
that perhaps by making them quite low paid as well to places that, that to people that have come here when really and truly we should have had some sort of strategy to say right if we want to get immigration under control uh, this, this is why I think well, we're absolutely screwed at the moment without wanting to be too depressing on a Sunday morning because um, you're right there are lots of jobs that we have outsourced and we have built an economy based on cheap labor outsourcing jobs that we ourselves kind of don't want to do and in actual fact what we should have had is a strategy to make us want to do those jobs and yeah. so i think that, that that there is a lot more to this than just people coming on boats and i think people coming on boats is a problem and i get it and i certainly understand why that's a problem for people but it's far bigger than that you know, it's almost depressing, and these sound bites are a bit frustrating because it makes you think that the problem's going to be solved. It ain't going to be solved. It ain't going to be solved. Uh, OK, when we come back, we'll uh, uh, talk about what British Airways need to do. Oh, that, I could do a show on that. I really could, I could do two hours on that myself. And uh, we'll also talk about XL seats for free for those people who need them on planes. All next, here on Talk TV. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <No>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They're that right. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Uh, morning, still here with uh, travel guru Simon Calder. Now, can we talk about the uh, story we've been discussing this morning? And that is the uh, plus size influencer. Now, I don't know if you saw Simon uh, a few weeks ago that there was this plus size influencer and she tried to get on a plane and she was saying how terrible it was to be on a plane. She's American. And that it was a breach of her human rights that she was unable to fit on the plane properly. And she is now meeting with senators that uh, to uh, try and get something 
uh, in writing some sort of law to say that airlines should be legally obliged to seat bigger people in more seats or bigger seats or some capacity for free. Um, what do you think? Well, it's never going to happen, but it's an interesting talking point. So, of course, the average um, uh, size of people is increasing. I would say that uh, obesity is particularly a problem in the US and also in, in the UK. And, of course, aircraft are designed on the basis of one size fits all. And increasingly, um, the narrow economy seats do not fit every passenger. Now, you have then got to look at the overall uh, picture, including people with disabilities, people who have mobility issues, and decide whether or not aviation really needs to take more action to to be uh, to give access for all. And there's lots of really good social reasons why that should happen. However, there's an awful lot of economic reasons about why it won't. And the best policy I have seen for any uh, passengers of size, as they're called in the US, is uh, as practiced by Southwest Airlines. And they basically just say, right, if you are a passenger of size, and the general um, view is if you need a seatbelt extension, then We'd like you to book two seats together. We'd like you to pay for both of them. But if the plane's not completely full, we will give you the money back for the um, extra, seat. extra seat. And since planes are rarely full, that most of the time people are so effectively they, so they getting could, extra if, seat. As long as there was an, ex, an empty seat somewhere, somewhere else on the plane, plane yep. one, they'll get that empty that, that, seat yes. cost back. Effectively, so it's, it's basically just saying... That does seem extremely yeah. fair and reasonable. Does that apply... Because um, the only I, I have no sympathy with this as well because you know and I'm I'm overweight but I've I you know and it's it's frustrating when you're in a small seat and I get it but you have to sort of just get over it. The only thing that I think well the two things I'd say are firstly um, if it's a really severe medical condition that means you're overweight then I have more sympathy with you not having to to, to pay for that. But um, uh, secondly, it would just put the prices up for everyone else. Uh, yes, and, and there's an equal, and I was well, not, not necessarily equal, but there's an opposite view, which is actually it is ridiculous that you are um, having to pay extra for your baggage. You know, and if it's one kilo over the limit, then you're going to be paying an extra 20, 30, 40 pounds. And yet the total weight of passenger plus baggage may well be uh, less than the person in the but, next but is, seat. Isn't that why they go so mad for baggage because actually what they're trying to do is claw back the fact that we're all fatter well uh, that look the, the actual weight of passengers collectively doesn't add too much to the aircraft's um, operation and and so therefore some people are saying you, you just weigh every passenger do it discreetly there's and, an airline that does that is it samoan or hawaiian uh, oh, or something? Look, there's lots lots of little airlines i've been weighed in in um, places like kenya if, you, if you're getting on a, a light aircraft then they will weigh you or sometimes just ask your weight because they want to um, sort out the weight and balance on the aircraft to make sure yes. that it is properly Which in is trim very yeah. important because yeah. if the, you know there have been really serious crashes where they've not calculated you know they've just done averages on small planes and and and, and they've crashed because they can't get off the runway yeah um, so so therefore it, it's it's something which which happens and the idea that you would be at uh, check-in and they they sort of weigh you and then you would you, you would then pay accordingly i think that's that's fairly fatuous and of course basically um budget airlines if, if you're a three-year-old you'll be paying exactly the same as a, a full-size adult they just kind of do it on averages so yeah and also, i don't think what this... about tall people you know yeah. if you start if you crack that one open you would start saying yep. well hang on tall people are, are just born tall that's not their fault so yep. shouldn't they have to have a free seat well sadly it's just life's not fair sometimes oh well e exactly and and other people who who have disabilities that for instance require them to keep maybe their legs outstretched they could say well we need to be in business class in a flat bed because that's the only way it's going to happen and i would I'm, say that in fact i'm that's going to be my excuse next time i get on <laughs> the plane so uh unfortunately i i think there should be many more efforts made particularly for disabled people on aircraft i, I think that the way in which we treat disabled people in travel is shameful actually the number of times you see disabled people stranded on trains 
planes. It's awful, absolutely awful. And in this day and age, that shouldn't happen. And we do forget that. Um, mind you, train is always an option, and you've been looking into trains this week, right? Yes, I've been looking at the amazing rebirth of the European sleeper train between the two most important capital cities in East, in Western Europe, continental Europe, Berlin and Paris. So I was at Paris Gare de l'Est, the historic departure point for the Orient Express on Tuesday to see the first arrival since Covid of the Berlin to Paris sleeper train and indeed that same evening uh, the first departure of the uh, uh, train restored from Paris to Berlin. Now it takes 14 hours. It typically costs absolute minimum for a couchette. Do you know a couchette, Christo? I've you... never had a couchette. OK, fine. So Are you in... offering me a couchette? Imagine a, 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 a railway compartment where you have six um, uh, th three berths down each side. Okay. So it's a bit like a sort of a, a, a dormitory, like a very, very low rent youth hostel dormitory. Anyway, you sleep in one of these, it's like a camp bed, but you can generally get an all right sleep in it and you sleep your way from Berlin to Paris and it costs about 60 quid. You can probably fly for less than that. I was seeing some easy jet flights for sort of 30, 40 pounds, but you can take more luggage and a lot of people say it's more civilised. That might be the be better option for bigger people as well. Uh, exactly, yes, really good idea. And uh, it, it's um, being run actually by Austrian railways, not French or German railways, because they think we we, we can um, build a network of, of uh, sleepers. So it's not quite the Orient Express, although it does cover a large part the, of the same route. You can't... I've only been on the Orient Express once. Oh, and now you're talking about the Venice Samplon Orient yes. Express, which is not the same thing. The Orient Express is a perfectly normal scheduled train that ran from Paris via Strasbourg, yes. via Munich, via um, Vienna, Budapest, um, Belgrade, all the way to Istanbul. And, but, but are you are you but are you saying that it's not the same train anymore, or by calling it the Orient Express, it's not the actual route? Oh no, the the the, the fancy train using I think rolling stock from the nineteen twenties and thirties, the Venice Saint Orient Express is very simply just a tourist yeah. train. It's not nothing to do with the Orient Express, which ran until two thousand and nine um, as an actual train. Oh, all right. Yeah, but, uh, was, but it wasn't an old train up to no, 2009. No, no, it was just a normal train. Just because normal train, you can yeah. still do that old route on the on the 1920s trains as oh, well. What, well. I think once or twice a year well, they do that route. Yeah, anyway, it, it's it's not not quite... Uh, we're talking about mass passenger transport here as opposed to... Uh, uh, how was it? Anyway, I've heard that it's quite sort it was, of but you rattly. Can't, you can't do... What I did was just an... Um, it was uh, for my mum's birthday... And um, we did the early morning departure from Paris. Yes. Uh, just to London. So you yeah. used to be able to just to do Paris to London. So you'd go from Paris to Calais, then you'd get on a bus and they'd take you over through yeah. the Eurotunnel. And then you'd get the, um, what's the sort of British equivalent? What's that called? Uh, the, the, oh gosh, um, uh, th 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 they, they put the, some kind of Pullman train. Pullman, the yeah. British Pullman. Yeah. And you'd get the British Pullman from like Folkestone or somewhere, yeah. I think, uh, up to Victoria. Yes. And um, so it was amazing. You had afternoon tea and champagne. But you can't do that anymore. They don't no. just do the Paris uh, to London no, they, route They've anymore. dropped that because of Brexit. Oh, have they? Yes. Oh, that's a shame, because I was looking it up the other day, because my partner really wants yeah. to try the Orange Express. I said, oh, my God, we'll just do the... You know, it's, it's, it was not inexpensive, but it's, it's achievable and manageable, because the actual... You know, the ones that are two or three days or even overnight are thousands, whereas this one was much more affordable. So they don't do that anymore because of Brexit. Uh, yeah, because because uh, there's too much bureaucracy Oh, involved. I suppose you'd have to have everyone's passports checked. It's, it's, it gets very, very complicated. Oh, that's such a so shame because that, that was such an amazing experience. Well, except that here we are, you can do little sections down towards um, Austria and Italy. So you could do Innsbruck to Verona or Verona to... Venice, yeah, and you just pay, you know, uh, day fare, uh, yeah, you pay sort of two, three hundred quid yeah. for it. Um, so. all right, so uh, let's do some of the tweets and the texts. Um, I was on a flight once next to a large person who was constantly apologizing. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, I said, Would you please stop apologizing? If you want to apologize, pay half my fare, oh. and that, that shut them up, <laughs> says yeah. Dan. Thank you. Kate from Hornsey. Tell Simon I could listen to him all day. He has a oh. gorgeous, sexy voice. Crikey, Kate from Hornsey. And his advice is great as well. Thank you. Um, 
Another one here saying, um, you're not alone in feeling frustrated at the way immigration is being managed. That's why Reform UK are going strength to strength, says John. John, well, I saw what Reform were planning the other day, though, and I have to say that, that some of it did seem a bit unachievable as well. Um, and I think some of what they were planning, which I, I won't go into now, but it, I, I, it made me... Uh, I understand the motivation of reform, but I think that it would take a, a, someone needing to drill down into the detail about how likely what they want to do, because um, I think a lot of it would be open to all sorts of legal challenges and might not be as achievable. Um, Another one here as well. Can you ask why no one? Ask Simon, why does, why does no one say hello to you when you're doing live broadcasting? Because you must be one of the most famous faces in London. So when you're out at Heathrow or whatever oh, in a gosh, station, do people come up to you? No, well, um, I mean, mostly because I'm being thrown out of various places. Honestly, I was doing a broadcast, I won't mention the broadcaster, um, from... Paris Gare de l'Est. Now, it was all a bit last minute. I didn't have permission from anybody and I sort of set up my laptop and so on and suddenly they were just reading the introduction to me and then these two people came along and I thought, oh no. Um, and um, so I, uh, th but they, they, they saw that, uh, they worked out what was going on and they decided to give it a miss as opposed to at London King's Cross where I was again working for a broadcaster and they were just reading the introduction and I was moving my setup, which is a kind of slightly complicated microphone laptop light yeah. arrangement across the concourse as I was talking so uh, that's the only hello I get they're but, so uh, very they're yeah. very funny about filming in these yeah. sorts of places without a pass but of course if it's a well, news yeah, thing yeah, no no, no I, I thought in the case of King's Cross I thought it was outside the boundary but I clearly wasn't and, ah, and okay. anyway it was more than their jobs worth so so that's a very nice thought but um no of course it's lovely when people say hello in any circumstances do you get and do you ever get bored of um people, I don't know, at dinner parties or whatever, just asking your travel advice, or could you talk about it all oh, day? Oh, no, I'm enthralled by it. It's very, very nice to be asked. I, I mean, I'm glad I'm not a doctor, uh, <laughs> because I dare say, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I was about to show you my rash, actually. Well, well, uh, quite, yeah, well, let's wait till we're off air, shall wait we? Wait till the break. <laughs> um, OK, we're going to go to an early break, because when we come back, we're going to talk about why the French are furious with Airbnb, and we're going to, and we're going to do this in a few minutes, we're going to finally solve the problems that British Airways are facing. We've got, we've got <laughs> £7 billion to spend, Simon. Yeah. So we're going to have to spend it wisely, but we're going to talk about what you would spend that £7 billion on to sort out BA. And that is all here on Talk TV. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Tibble today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Bravman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you'll have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, Ofcom. 
Mm. Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Uh, do you know, I'm trying to look up my travel plans <laughs> for Simon Coulter. I can't find them. I'll have to send them to you, uh, Simon, because uh, we're going to a wedding, and I think it's in uh, Girona. Uh -huh. And um, I, I need you to do the uh, uh, do my travel yes. itinerary Absolutely. for me. Yep. Thank okay. you. I will, I'll I message will you and case. I'll tell you where it is. Right, so um, it's, it's great having a travel friend. We've been so talking I'm, about um, overnight um, sleeper ferries to and from the Balearics Oh, you Spain. didn't tell me it was an overnight sleeper. Well, well, well yeah, it'd be oh, funny, oh, Will it be all right with an overnight sleeper <laughs> ferry? I think I could do an overnight sleeper ferry. Yeah. Um, OK, let's talk um, about British Airways. Yes. Because uh, it's been reported in the last couple of days that um, they are planning on spending £7 billion to try and make BA once again the world's favourite airline. Hmm. Um, because, of course, it's got a terrible reputation now when it comes to the way, in, you know, certainly the, 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 is it the Skytrax rankings, which is the... Oh, well, yeah, people people love complaining about British Airways. Um, it's uh, kind of one of those... Oh, so I, I complain about it to you every show that you well, Yes, on. but but it's a bit like, well, let's say, I don't know, John Lewis, Marks and Spencers, people kind of think that they've got some ownership of it and think that it should be very, very good at all the time, uh, at all, all times. Um, let me remind you that uh, the safety record is extraordinary. Uh, no fatal accidents since 1986. And uh, that uh, the safety is even that better. That was the, the, the Manchester runway incident. It was an awful Which tragedy. changed... Yeah, um, aviation forever. Yes, this, this was a, a, an aircraft, uh, British Air Tours, the charter division going from Manchester to uh, Corfu. And there was an engine fire, and the the basic problem. This was before it took off, but the huge, terrible, terrible tragedy in getting people off the aircraft, and and lots changed. Which, after that. which some of it actually as well. That that accident was not. Some of the procedures were not British Airways' fault as well because it wasn't known at the time that you don't turn the plane into the wind. Yeah. And one of the reasons that the fire was so awful was because the um, the side on which the engine went on fire during the takeoff when they pulled off the runway, which they did exactly the right thing, they pulled into the, the wind, so therefore the, the engine fire was then blown onto the fuselage, which made the fire inside far worse. But it also... that that fire changed aviation forever with but before that fire they didn't have the lights on the floor to get out of the plane before that fire um i think it, there were a lot more flammable materials in the plane before that fire the actual exit between the seats when you got to the the, the galley was was far more narrow so that changed an awful lot in aviation that 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 terrible terrible tragedy um but you're right you know you'd want to be a pilot if there was a problem with the plane uh, yes, I mean EasyJet, um, Ryanair, the the actually the second and the first safest airlines in the world in terms of the number of passengers carried without a fatal accident. But um, thankfully, aviation is just astonishingly safe. So let's take that as a given that British Airways is doing right. Well, there's all sorts of things they could do, but frankly, why would they bother? Because because, because people are getting more and more annoyed with them. No, but 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 they've got the largest number of slots at the world world's most desirable international airport, Heathrow, the best thing that ever happened from a passenger's point of view, and probably arguably also from BA's point of view, was Virgin Atlantic, because that has forced them to be um, a, a better airline, because competition's great. But they're not always a better airline, though. No, I they're, mean, they're better than they would be without Virgin Atlantic. Their website is run on a ZX Spectrum. 
Well, yes, OK. Their app closes, you can't log it. The amount of times you try and log into your booking on British Airways, whether it be via the app or the website, and it's oh. like computer says, no, sorry, there's a technical error. Or the worst, we can't process what you're doing now, please call us. And then you literally have to set aside, you have to, we're talking of holidays, you have to take some holiday off work to actually call them. Oh, I mean, look, those are all things. Most of the time it works fine, and um, I, I'm no, I'm a great fan of British Airways. So, you, you, so your answer is Ryanair don't to, don't spend the seven billion. <laughs> well, no, I mean they they they, they will be, but but sorry, the, the headline here. Um, uh, uh, reclaim the world favourite airline title from Middle East rivals. Well, Sir Tim Clark, the uh, president of of. Um, Emirates will be chuckling over his cornflakes at this because the, the scale of, of Emirates um, relative to the scale of British Airways, BA is, is kind of tiny and not really growing very fast and that's fine because IAG, its holding company, which also owns Iberia, of Spain, uh, Whaling, Aer Lingus, um, they're basically just, they, they just want to print money and um, if you've got the most slots at Heathrow, then you can do that and you can spend a bit more money and try and make things a bit better but um, ultimately uh, it is simply not at the races compared with uh, giant airlines like like Emirates. Well, the, the, this writer in the mail set out a 25-point yes. plan, including improving the website, including the app, making sure people's luggage arrives with them. I mean, that is not unreasonable, and the BA's luggage record is terrible. Oh, well, yeah, but that's because lots of people change planes, and unfortunately it's when you change planes that things go wrong, and it goes missing at Heathrow. And the, the best thing about British Airways, apart from its fantastic safety record and, in general, superb staff, the best thing about British Airways is the hand baggage allowance and it doesn't matter if like me you are traveling on the cheapest possible economy ticket you can find you are allowed a big roll along case and a backpack and nobody's going to stop and which you which i now don't take luggage in the hold anymore no and quite I, and you I don't, don't need to on british airways and therefore it's not going to go missing um one of them was give us more than one of the recommendations was give us more than one ice cube in a gin and tonic well yeah um okay and a lot of people have still very exercised in economy in uh europe that you don't get a free gin and tonic anywhere and, uh, no uh, aegean Aegean Airline, oh, oh, no, my favourite no. airline. Oh, I know, Aegean's great. If you've not flown on Aegean, this is the kind of resurrected Olympic Airways, and it's a superb airline, flies very, very good quality it's, aircraft. It's, it's amazing. The yeah. captain, when the last time I got Aegean, the captain greeted us when we got on the plane. Yeah. Um, we well, sat down, they gave us a meal yeah. and um, two small bottles of wine if you yeah. wanted them. They don't, they don't allow you to get bladdered. You're allowed two and then they say that's it. You're yeah. not allowed anymore. But it was so civilised. And I think the problem with BA, and I've said this to you before, is that they, I think they're trying to market themselves to compete with the with the EasyJets and the Ryanairs. When in actual fact, I do think there's room in the market for the slightly... Um, uh, for for the John Lewis as opposed to Sainsbury's, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or you know, if if if, if EasyJet and Brian Air or Aldi and Lidl, yeah. Well, Sainsbury's does very well, as does Waitrose, and there's no reason why BA can't be the Sainsbury's and Waitrose rather than the Aldi or the Lidl. Yeah, and they're they're, they're doing odd things. So, for instance, in economy, as you will know, I, I assume you sometimes. Um, uh, uh, sometimes I do brave economy. I yeah, wear okay. a, I wear a, a face mask, a, a hazmat suit, uh, <laughs> but I do sometimes brave. Uh, economy. And you get a small twenty-five centilitre bottle of water and a packet of crisps, and that's your sort of catering. you I'm thinking genuinely. Why bother? Yeah, yeah, this is coming at a cost to you. It's not, you know, it's not cheering me up or anything. So therefore, possibly bringing back meals would, would work. But it, it, you know, they turned those meals from a cost into a profit centre, and they presumably have. No, with I, it's going. I, I tell you what they should do. Without a doubt, they should, and this would, I think, improve the passenger experience no end. Do a drink service once with your bag of crisps or your nuts, and then anything else, charge for. But you should do one drink service, whether it be a cup of tea, whether it be a Bloody Mary, whatever it be, anything. I got on a British Airways flight a few months ago, and I said, and, and even though it was a paid-for flight, I said, could I have a Bloody Mary, please? And they said, oh, I, w I don't think we've got the tomato. I mean, imagine, imagine not being able to get a Bloody Mary on a British Airways well, flight. I mean, that is out... Outrageous. Well, one, one of the... Uh, that, that is against my human rights. Talk about the XL flyers. That is my human rights, Simon. OK, well, um, item number 17 in this checklist is 
offer Tabasco and Worcestershire sauce as standard when a passenger asks for a Bloody Mary and you're asking for a Bloody Mary and you're not jolly getting one. Yes. Oh, yes. I uh, like it spicy with lashings of Worcestershire sauce. And I, in fairness, what I do actually like is celery salt on it, but I'm not going to be pedantic. I realise they might not be able to carry celery salt, but I think those things are very, very basic. Um, and expensive. And if you're... If the trouble is, all right, uh, can I get... Can I just put a counter view which is that it's us passengers fault because frankly if i'm looking at the fares on easyjet and ryanair and british airways and the budget airlines are cheaper i'm going to go with that and so are lots of other people because i'm promiscuous i just want to have well, it's, it's your fault it is my fault it's your yeah. fault yeah you exactly ruined you the world's can't, favorite you can't get any celery um, salt in your bloody mary can we talk about just quickly before we go oh. i want to talk about the uh, airbnb and why the french yes Oh, zut allure. And um, don't forget that, as well, on my New Year's Day show, where I will be here from 10am, I will be making Bloody Marys. Um, and I will show you how to make a proper Bloody Mary. I'll be bringing in the ingredients. Well, that, so that a treat, for, treat for everybody. Death to suitcases, reads the headline. The street war against French Airbnb. And this is all centred in the beautiful city of Marseille, um, which is uh, the second city of, of France um, out, down on the um, south coast. Absolutely beautiful place, transformed in recent years from really quite a kind of gritty port to a beautiful tourist location. And as a result, loads of people want to go there and they want to stay in Airbnbs. And that has the same effect in Marseille as it does in so many other cities, whether that's Barcelona or Venice, that you force normal people out because um, effectively if a push, property becomes B the Airbnb, uh, then they are excluded and the prices go up. And there's 11,000 uh, Airbnb rentals in Marseille, mostly, of course, in the city centre because that's where you want to be. And according to a local newspaper residential apartment prices went up um, by 14 percent um, in a couple of years. So, so what are people doing there? What, what are they actually doing oh, to stop it? Because I've read things about probably taping up doors and taping up letterboxes. Yes, uh, uh, they're, they're super gluing um, the, the, these key deposit places. You know, the, there's quite often there's a little yeah. key box where you, you put in a code and you get the key out. Well, if that's got super glue on, you're not going to be doing that. So residents of Marseille are yes. going around and super gluing the Airbnb key deposit thing so that the Airbnbers can't get into yes. the Airbnbs. And, it, of course, it's 11 o'clock at night your flight was late you you probably on va you've lost you've not got any luggage <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly you find that you can't can't get in um and obviously this is this is illegal but um understandable and gradually i think more and more places are just going to put in rules which say the original thought of airbnb which was christo's got a spare room um he, it really is a wonderful use of spare capacity you can come and stay in his lovely house and frankly wouldn't we all pay a fortune for that yes um as opposed to industrializing it where entire apartment blocks i am told are being bought up to be let out entirely then, as Airbnb. Can they have it both ways? Because Marseille, as you have mentioned, has gone from a place where it's perhaps less, less desirable, and part of that will be as a result of the tourism money. Oh, yeah. Well, of course. They can't have it both ways. Yeah, exactly. Tourism is a... What is buying lesson. that superglue? <laughs> tourist money, ironically. Well, yes, and, and it's completely given the, um, the, the the place a new lease of life. Talking of which, here's Dr David Bull. Oh, very would... good morning to you, Simon. Oh, very nice to see you. Christo, lovely to see you. Blue up your letterbox any day. Well, that's ever so kind of you. Right. You really need to get in the festive spirit. Yeah. You're so bar humbug. I'm yeah. not. Have you Aren't not seen you? my house? No, we, uh, we because I've the not been invited. Have you got the? Uh, can we put the picture up again? Have we got time to quickly put it up? I'll show you my house. Right. I'm, I'm, you're not going to come in person, obviously. No, obviously not. You know, no, be invited. Obviously not. And I will be covering up. Have my you been address. invited to his house? Uh, no, I, we no. were just talking about whether he would do Airbnb. In which case, I would pay big money yeah, to be invited. Would. Oh, would there you? There we go. Yeah. That's my house. That's, yeah. um, Oh. Well, that looks marvellous. Well yeah. done. Who did that? I bet you didn't do those. No, I mean... No, I knew you wouldn't have but, done But there's them. also one... But that's a bit tacky, isn't it? N which? The star? Ray, no, reindeers no, grazing on the bin store. No, I love the star. I've got the same star. Look at the reindeers that's grazing on the bin store. Yeah. yeah, but I quite yeah. like that. Yeah. 
So there you go. Don't you tell me. No, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no. Anyway, how are we? We uh, well. All right, we thank well. you. Can you believe it? A week today is Christmas Eve. Oh, wow. I don't know what happened. How did that happen? And I was quite well prepared, so I started sending Christmas cards in November to the over, to friends overseas. I've just completely run out of time. Oh, I haven't yeah. finished. Oh, we, oh. We're sending our cards tomorrow. Are you? Yeah. First class. They won't the, get there. They will, first class. You think? If, Royal if, Mail's if, too if busy Royal delivering... Yes, they're too busy parcels. delivering parcels. Damn it. Damn I know. Uh, OK, what else have you got coming up? Will you talk about that? Um, we will talk about that. Also, I'm, I'm slightly obsessed with this Sunak Maloney new love-in, yeah, yeah. and there's a lot going on behind the scenes politically. You've also got this great article this morning saying that Starmer is outflanking the Conservatives by moving right, and certainly in terms of that rhetoric. I should think Rishi Sunak's lying down in a dark room over Christmas. Uh, the Sun has also come out this morning saying Sunak needs to come out fighting in 2024, and I couldn't agree more. Also, th I've got a great story about the Rwanda plan. I'll tell you more about that later on. Also, what does Rishi Sunak do? Because the NHS is collapsing, the new figures on ambulance waiting times, people can't get the treatment we want. Also, uh, it is Sunday, so we've got Transatlantic Talk with a lovely Caroline, Future Politics Panel today, uh, Tech Rundown, Davis joining us from Sydney, Dr René's on holiday, so Charlie uh, Rowley has very kindly agreed to step in. Oh, Dr. Rennie's on holiday again. Again? So She's on holiday more than you. I know. Seriously, outrage. she yeah. should be a travel correspondent. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you do to fix British Airways? Well, so I didn't hear that, but I was very intrigued by that because I well, tend... spending £7 billion pounds to make themselves well, the world's so, favourite airline. Well, again. so if you fly club, that whole herringbone thing where you climb Ooh. over people, that has to go. Oh, that's right, gone okay. now. Oh, has it gone? Well, OK, you, I haven't flown for a long time. You obviously haven't flown club recently. No, well, no I haven't, because oh, I'm always here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think they need to remember what BA was, which was a premium airline where you actually felt you were getting something different. And, and certainly in terms of the food offering and economy, you got half a sort of bun when you're coming back from New York. Not good enough. No. And, and they used to be 